I need a Kakamura's ship for the next episode, so I decided to make one. Kakamoras are going to invite themselves to Mal and Ben's wedding, and I think I'm going to make Kakamoras more of recurring characters in my stories, so I'm going to need their ships. There is no way I'm going to get this ship built in less than a week before the next story, so I'm going to get the basic shape of the ship done now, kind of blur out the ship in the story so it's not so obvious that the ship is unfinished, and then come back and work on it before next time when they appear in my stories again. I know I still haven't finished Uma and CJ's pirate ship yet. I feel like I have a huge to-do list and I'm just starting things and not finishing any of them, but they will get done, hopefully before the end of the year. I got some plans for the ship and it's going to be a bit of a work to finish them. Ever since I saw Kakamura's ship like a few years ago, I wanted the ship. I couldn't imagine building something so complicated back at the time. It still looks daunting, but I'm going to try. Uma and CJ and their pirates need someone to fight with. Another antagonist. Someone who they are going to compete for the treasures. Since Kakamoras are the only other pirates in this world at this point, I think I'm going to use them more often. Also, we are adding Raya and the Last Dragon, and we all know Southeast Asia and Polynesia, Micronesia, and Melanesia are like right beside each other. There are some Southeast Asian countries that share a lot in common or maybe more in common with Pacific Islanders. So I think it's not too far-fetched to think that they will share some waters with Kakamoras. Let's just to say that Kumandra has some treasures that Kakamoras are interested in. And so is CJ and Uma. So I think I'm going to use the ship a lot more in the future. I think it's worth spending the time to make it. I'm absolutely fascinated by Kakamura's ship, but I have no idea how this ship is designed. Even after looking at it for hours, there is so much happening on this ship and I can't figure out what's really going on. So basically, what I'm getting is that this ship is like a floating island. They built a mound of coconuts on top of canoes that are tied together and then they built a tower surrounding the mound. There are a half dozen sails on top. I'm guessing there are about a half dozen floors which are loosely interconnected with ladders and then the leftover space is covered with coconuts and drums and other various things I can't quite make out. So I'm going to make the canoes which will be at the bottom, build a mound on top and then add the sails. I'm going to cover up the mound with temporary floors which we will come back and finish in the later videos. So, with that explanation, let's backtrack last 4 minutes and talk about what I'm doing. We need to first make the mound, something that will give both the height and volume to the ship. So, the easiest and the cheapest material for filling up a large space is, of course, aluminum foil. I crumpled up some foil and made a decent looking mound. And then I made 8 canoes for the front end and 7 canoes for the back end of the ship. And then I glued them onto a board so they will stay together. I colored them brown. I'm going to come back and add the ropes and 
other details onto the canoes later, but for now, we have something where the mound can stand on. We need to color the mound brown so it will disappear into the background against the wooden floors in front. The mound is only acting as the backbone of the ship. It should not be so obvious to the eyes. Before we color the mound, we need to cover it up with some paper so the paint can stay on better. I wet some paper towels and then poured some glue and let it dry on top of the foil mound and then let it dry overnight and we have a pretty sturdy structure. Then we paint the mound brown with some acrylic paint and then let it dry. While the mound is drying, let's work on the sail. We first need to make the mast. We use the bamboo skewers. We cut them and then glue them and tie them with strings to form the shape we want. For the areas that are bent, we use the metal wires. We covered up the metal wires with paper so we can paint them to the same color as the bamboo skewers. To make the sail, we cut out some white cloth and then painted them orange. We painted the Greek patterns and then we hemmed all of the edges. We colored both the front and back. Of course, we also drew the Kakumora's flag. This is going to be the flagship. And then we sew the sails onto the mast and then we insert the mast and sails onto the mound. And then we cut out some thick cardboard to make temporary floors, which we will take out in the later videos and make proper, better looking floors. The floors look so complicated that I'm going to need to dedicate another video just to make all of the floors. I think there are roughly six floors, although they are not at the same height. There are multiple floors that are kind of stacked on top of each other. Looks like there are even subfloors in between floors behind the main floors, so it's going to get very complicated. For now, the five main floors are kind of stacked on top of each other. The final floor, the tower, is omitted right now. It's too small anyway. Alright, so we got a ship that looks like this right now. Let's pretend it's Kakumura's ship and continue with the story. We will make it better over time. <laughs>